Hi, today we are going to make some very cool 3D transitions in DaVinci Resolve. Transitions just like the ones you'll find in my new pack of transitions for Resolve also available today. More on that later. Let's get started and I will show you how to make this. And hey, we are here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. I have two gameplay clips here and we are going to start by making sure our effects library is open. Come down to uh, video transition. Inside that, we're gonna grab a normal cross dissolve, drop that on, zoom in, and you can right click and go to convert to fusion cross dissolve. With that selected in the inspector, you will see effect cross dissolve with this little button that you can click and it will load you right up in the fusion page. Now we are making one specific transition in this video, but the process is applicable to every transition. Anything you do in the Fusion page can be packaged up and saved as a transition. As long as it starts on one clip, ends on the other using these two media in nodes, you can save that as a drag and drop transition that you can use or send off or sell or anything. It's very cool. But back to the task at hand, you will see we have our uh, media one, which is our first clip, media two, which is our second clip. And those are both going into this cross dissolve node. By default, this is like a little macro, but inside is just a normal dissolve node. And you'll see that over the course of this clip, that fader is just automatically sliding from background to foreground. It's a cross dissolve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that node and delete it. I will also untether this first media one. So now we just have our floating media in one, our floating media in two, and our media out. Everything we do in Fusion needs to go back into that media out to send it back to the edit page. This effect is cool because it is real 3D. Let me show you. For both this media in one and two, I'm gonna click this button in the toolbar to create an image plane 3D node. And for both of those, and then now if we preview either of those image planes, you'll see that that footage is now just mapped onto a plane in this complete 3D workspace. If we connect both of those image planes, it will auto create a merge 3D node. And anything you do in 3D needs to come back through a renderer 3D. So you can look at this renderer 3D, and that will go back to our media out. And you can instantly see what that's doing. If we preview that merge 3D here, it looks exactly the same as that image plane 3D, but previewing our media out on VR2, you see that is back to just a normal 2D image. Okay, this is exciting. Like I said, I'm previewing my merge 3D here, but you can still only see this one plane. But if I click on media plane two and start to move this around, there you see what's happening. Because I haven't changed these controls, both of these planes are in the exact same point in 3D space. I'm gonna undo that and then we are going to get started doing some cool stuff. We are only going to make very subtle changes to these image plane nodes and then we're gonna do some animation after the fact. So on image plane two, I'm gonna come around, I'm holding a middle mouse button and right mouse button to uh, pivot around here. And with this image plane two selected, I'm gonna come over to transform and pull it just a hair in Z space. So it just pops out. So now if we look, we have our image one here, image two, but this will be backwards. So we need to come into rotation and right on that Y rotation, I'm gonna type in 180, that'll be flipped, correct. And this will accommodate for the flipping motion that we are really going for later. Now we are keeping this 3D scene very basic. We won't even need a 3D camera for what we're going for, but we are going to animate this merge 3D. Because you see, when I come into this Merge 3D on the transforms, if I move this back and forth, and even if I rotate on the Y, this has our entire scene. And just depending on how we position and rotate this Merge 3D, that will change how it is presented uh, to the renderer, to the final product, to the media out, to send it back to the edit page. I'll clear this out. And we are gonna start playing around with anim curves. Anim curves is something very cool. I have promised for a long time to mess with it and I will mess with it in a future video sometime where I really go in depth. There's a lot to go in depth with, but we're gonna to touch on some basics here. And to do that, first I'm gonna right click on this Z translation option and go to modify with anim curves. And it will disappear, oh no. But if we come over to modifiers, here we have all of these controls. And if we zoom out on this Merge 3D, you'll see what is really happening. It is starting on this position here and just sliding a forward in 3D space until the end. That's weird, we want something different. We want this to start full screen, slide back, hold, and then wait until the end of the video where we'll slide back to fill the screen again. So the first step of that is to take this animation here and have it go from starting full screen 
to at the very end being where we want to sit sort of in the middle of our composition, even though we're starting at the end, you'll see why. So if we start here, I'll bring the scale down to about one, and then, hey, I will change that to negative one. By default, it was moving towards the camera, now it will move away from the camera. You'll see it starts here, it slides back just a bit there. Let's change this a little up, maybe negative three. And this offset is what is really important. And if I come back to my first frame here, if I pull up this offset, you want to bring this all the way up to 1.32. Click that, that I just, I just know that's the right number. And hey, it will start full screen. And as soon as our composition starts playing, it will slide and go all the way back. Looks like negative three was actually a little much. Try negative two. Hey, maybe we just wanted one after all. One looks great. Full screen, all the way back to here. But this isn't what we want. We want to click this button here, mirror. And now this will slide back and then instantly ping pong and come back up. We want it to hold a little bit at the end. To do that, we will use easing. On this curve, I'm gonna come down to custom easing. And just like curves in the spline viewer, this line we have here is a representation of this move. Over the course of this transition, it starts here, full screen, and then goes back. But of course, remember, we are mirroring this, so this is what is happening over half of our composition. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the second keyframe and pull out this handle almost all the way over here into the straight line. And pull this first handle, just crank that up as well. Now, if we watch this, it starts full screen, quickly it slides back, and then just sort of sits there before coming back forward. This is great. I'm also gonna make one quick adjustment here just so we have time to work. I am using the default transition length, but if we scale this up, because we're using anim curves, it won't affect the animation, but it'll just give us a little more room to see how things are playing out. I'll jump back into Fusion, so full screen, slides back, waits, comes back forward. And you can mess with this as needed. If you want a little ease in, you can do that as well. So it doesn't fly back quite so fast, but it goes, holds, and then comes back forward. If you go to your very last frame, remember this is the last frame before the motion is complete. So this is saying at the next frame, it will be done its movement and it will be back to full screen. If we were to come over to our render node 3D and settings toggle on motion blur, it would really sell this as well. This is moving quite fast here. So you see all that motion blur, you will say, hey, one next frame, it'll be back to full screen. I'll toggle that off for now. And we can go back to our merge 3D modifiers and hey, this is great. This is half of our move. It slides back, holds, and comes forward again. Cool, now move number two. I'm going back to my Merge 3D Transform. And we're looking at this Y rotation. Right click, modify with Anim Curves. And if we even preview this here, remember it starts video one, it'll slide back. And as it's sliding back, it's rotating, gets to that second video, and then it starts to come forward and this is just one move. But remember, right now, this is a linear pace. As soon as it starts, it is starting to rotate. We want something a little snappier. So I will jump over to my anim carvers here under modifiers. The scale is great. We want to keep the source on transition, but if we come back to custom again, and we take the second keyframe, just like we did before, we crank this out. If we do the same thing with this first keyframe, then we'll get this really exaggerated S curve. And just like before, and remember we aren't mirroring this, so this action will take place over the course of our whole scene. You can see that the vertical movement is really only happening right in the middle. So if we preview this a little bit, it'll slide back. It's not really rotating yet, but once it gets there, it will whip right around pretty quick, just in time to come back and fill the scene again. Let's go back to the edit page. I will let this cache and we'll see what we have. And it's done, it was pretty quick, let's check this out. We are playing some Halo and whoosh, whoosh, whew. I don't have any sound effects, that was my mouth. You could add plenty of sound effects here and it would look really cool. And hey, we just made a custom 3D transition. The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to save this as a preset that you can use in your own projects here on the edit page or share anywhere else. We're dipping back into Fusion and this is gonna be a pretty simple. 
I'm just gonna select these media in out through this render and media out. And I'm gonna right click, go to macro, create macro. Now using this prompt, you can create really powerful presets. I've gone over that in some other videos. We don't need to enable any of these options here. I'm just gonna rename this. Neat, 3D, transition. Great, now I'm going to file, save as group. By default, it will go to an option for macros you want to use natively in Fusion. I recommend saving this somewhere simple. I have this presets test folder for when I'm doing crazy stuff like this. I'll click save, close out, and then our last little bit to import in the effects library in the Fusion page. I'm going to come down to templates, edit, transitions, click these three dots and go to show folder. And I'm going to pull up in a new window, this presets test, the location I just saved that transition and drag that into this transitions folder um, that Fusion just pointed us to. It'll update there. It will reset our effects viewer, which means it should be A-OK -okay there. And now if I just bring these clips back down in the timeline, create a completely new setup, zoom in, we have no transition there. If I click on video transitions and scroll down to Fusion transitions a little bit more, hey, we have neat 3D transition. I will drop that on. That catches real quick. And then, hey, we have that exact same transition. And if you were following along, you have a brand new transition on the edit page using this cool 3D effect. I could always go back, toggle on that motion blur. That would look pretty cool. And like I said, you can do anything to this scene to save it as a transition, just like I did in my brand new pack of transitions available today. Using this framework, I have 32 drag and drop transitions for all of you. Really, it is uh, 16 transitions and all of them have a variant. That first zoom back that we animated, uh, 16 of mine have that zoom back and then it performs a 3D motion. And then the rest of them are just that 3D motion, but staying at full screen. I got a request for that from my community members. It looked like a great idea. Now you have both options. You can save whichever ones you like as favorites and use them on any project or open them up in view and see exactly what I did, what I changed from this demo to create this new pack of transitions for you all. That pack of transitions is available now and link will be in the description. And just like for my first pack of text animations, uh, I am also giving away this transition pack to all community members at that $5 shipping and tier or above. If you want more info on that, you can click the little join button under this video uh, for more info. But if you're just interested in the transition pack, uh, that link is in the description. And hey, if you just like the tutorial, Tutorial. That's cool too. We do lots of cool stuff in Resolve Infusion on this channel. Click around, you might find something you like. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.